Welcome to my series on how to study efficiently. Now this is not your standard YouTube how to study video. It is not for the weary. It is really hard and it's going to shift everything you thought you knew about studying. The first principle in studying efficiently is that questions come first. Have you ever seen people just flip to the back of the book to find the questions before they even read the textbook? Or have you ever seen people just search for the question banks immediately without even looking at the content? Those people have it right. Believe it or not, you have to do questions first and before you even look at the textbook and before you even know anything about the topic. This sounds crazy, right? How are you supposed to answer questions correctly when you haven't even learned the topic? That's the magic. Studies show that you actually learn more by doing questions than by reading paragraphs out of a textbook, than listening to a lecture, than by drawing diagrams or color coding notes. Doing questions is the most efficient way to study. This book, Make It Stick, actually talks about one study where kids in a classroom were divided into two groups. One group didn't have any pop quizzes and learned the normal standard way, lectures, textbooks, and the other group of students had routine pop quizzes. Now the awesome thing about it is that the group that had the pop quizzes scored better on the final exam, even though they had failed the pop quizzes. How can this be? Even students that failed every single pop quiz still did better than the students who had no pop quizzes. The magic is in trying to answer questions. Your brain actually develops neural connections when you try to answer questions you don't know. And that's the magic. When you look at the questions first without even knowing the material, your brain is forced to expend energy to try to figure out what the answer is. As it's trying and expending energy, neurons are connecting. Attempting to answer challenging questions will force your brain to make new synapses, new connections. When you finally look at the answer, you'll be able to retain it much better because your brain has already been primed to remember things. It all goes back to the science. This by itself facilitates learning. This is actually called active learning. Active learning means that your brain is having to work. When you are passive learning, which means listening to a lecture, reading your notes, reading a textbook, those things are passive because your brain isn't having to work. All you're doing is absorbing. Your brain is not creating, your brain is not developing. When you get your brain into creating and developing, you are making new synapses. You are learning. That is the definition of learning right there. By trying to answer questions you don't know the answers to, you are forcing your brain to work and make synapses. Now, what does this look like in real life? Make pop quizzes for yourself. If you're in a class that is about trees, for example, and you go to the lecture like you're supposed to, and you listen to the lecture on trees, when you go home to study, do not re-listen to your lecture on trees. What you need to do is find questions on trees. That is the very next thing that you should do. Look for questions. Even if you don't remember what the lecture was about, try to answer those questions. Now, when you find questions, give yourself at least 30 seconds after each question to try to answer it. Now, the first question might be, what type of tree is this? And you have no idea what the answer is. You then set a timer on your phone. I don't know where my phone is, but you set a timer for 30 seconds. During those 30 seconds, challenge yourself to try to come up with an answer. For me, let's see, um, this tree, the bark is kind of patchy. So this tree has pretty thick branches. The top of it spreads out a lot. It might be some kind of oak tree because I've seen oak trees and I know what those look like. So maybe this is an oak tree. Um, the leaves are really small. Um, well, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know what season it is, but maybe it's an evergreen tree. I don't know. I'm going to guess it's some kind of oak tree. Once the 30 seconds is up, look at the answer. The answer is this is a pecan tree. Okay. All right, so I don't know trees. Now you might think during that exercise, I did not learn a single thing, but that's not true. During those 30 seconds that I was trying to come up with what type of tree this was, my brain was making synapses. My brain was making comparisons. 
my brain started searching for past trees that I've seen. My brain started thinking about the seasons. It really looked at the type and size of leaves that were on the tree. It started looking at the bark. I really had to use my brain during those 30 seconds to come up with some kind of BS answer. And in coming up with that BS answer, my brain was learning. Now, what I've learned in this example is that a pecan tree kind of looks like what I think an oak tree looks like. My brain will actually remember that throughout the day. I guarantee you at 10 o'clock PM, if somebody asks me what tree this is and shows me the same picture that we just went over right now, I'm going to be able to tell them it's a pecan tree. And that's how you get good at multiple choice questions. You have to do the questions first. That being said, use diagrams, use drawings, use whatever other things you need, but definitely go to the questions first. Don't go over the lectures and re-listen to them and write out notes. It's a waste of time. Writing notes is actually an example of passive learning. Passive learning is what we don't want to do. We want active learning. Now, another way to do this, and this is what I did during my musculoskeletal course, where I tested these theories out and actually scored a 100 on my musculoskeletal final. I stopped taking notes completely. Let me repeat that. I stopped taking notes completely. I just trashed them all. I realized that since note taking is passive, there's no need for me to do it. So how did I study? Our anatomy professor's name was Dr. Pat. Instead of taking notes while he was lecturing us, I started turning every important point that he made into questions. For example, during our musculoskeletal course, he mentions the thoracic nerve and he says, wing scapula is caused by a problem with the thoracic nerve. Listening to that in lecture, here's the only thing I write. If the thoracic nerve is severed, what condition can result? And that's it. That was my note. I got into the habit of having the papers. Um, actually, let me show you. Aha, let me redemonstrate. Paper, I fold it in half. Mm -hmm. And I would actually sit in class. And as soon as he said something interesting, anything that I could turn into a question, I would do it. He says, wing scapula results from a problem with the thoracic nerve. I would write, what condition results from severage to the thoracic nerves? Now, I wrote that on one side of the paper. On the other side of the paper, I would write the answer winged scapula. I numbered these questions as well. And that way I wouldn't get confused with what answer goes with what question. Now throughout the entire hour and a half of Dr. Pat's lectures, I would just make questions out of everything he discussed. And these were my only version of notes. Now for Dr. Pat's classes, I completely filled up multiple sheets of paper with one lecture. He had lots of information. You will find out in medical school, the biggest challenge with learning is the plethora of information being thrown at you at once. I would fill entire sheets of questions with just one of his lectures. It did hurt my hand. I was getting carpal tunnel. So I, I moved from writing down on pieces of paper to typing. I still had the same two column approach and I would have my questions on one side and my answers on the other. The next morning, as soon as I woke up, made some coffee, got ready for the school day, I would actually get the questions out, fold them so I couldn't see the answers, and I would go over each question and quiz myself, giving myself 30 seconds to answer each question. That hurt. <laughs> Let me tell you, it hurt my brain to study like this, but that's what I did every single time, and I made sure to go through all the questions before I went into class that day. I knew for the entire rest of the day that I had already studied my studying was done by eight o'clock a.m. And I had tackled the entire lecture in question format. I had created my own pop quiz. I was quizzing myself daily and I wasn't taking any other notes. This was the most efficient way to study for that course. It kept me on track during the classes. I actually became one of the students who sat in the front, who was able to answer questions during the class. I was able to really interact with Dr. Pad but that's all I did. This completely changed everything. It was like I had a secret that nobody knew about. 
And at the end of the day, when we took our final, most of our test questions came from my questions that I had made. This was the test. I was actually practicing the test every single day. And that's how I was able to make a 100 on that test. Now, if you're studying for the USMLE, if you're studying for these huge board exams, um, you don't have to make up your own questions. You can get question banks, right? Get question banks early. Do the questions as early as possible. It doesn't matter if you don't know the answers. Just like the example with the pecan tree, all you have to do is get your brain thinking about it. Get your brain to make those synapses. When you look at the answer 30 seconds later, your brain's going to remember that information a lot better than if you had just read it in a sentence. The magic is in trying to answer the questions. Do questions first. I realize that's clapping. You're probably not hearing what I'm saying. Do questions first. That is your number one step in learning how to study efficiently. <sighs> Let's keep going with lesson two.